Hi all, Brad Wright from the Single Malt Whiskey Club here and this month we've got an England Aussie standoff or an Ashes in April if you will. England will be going into bat first today with none other than their oldest whiskey distillery, St George's in Norfolk. St George's sells their single malt whiskey under the English brand name and this month we're proud to have the Australian exclusive on their small batch release rum cask matured whiskey. Only 1440 bottles of this batch is available worldwide and we've got the Australian allocation. And of course Australia won't be caught napping either, coming out swinging with a current World Whiskies Awards Australian single cask category winner from Chief's Son. But more on that in a bit. So our malt of the month this month is from St George's Distillery in Norfolk, which as I mentioned is England's oldest whiskey distillery. Interestingly, this is much, much younger than I first imagined when I first heard about it. In fact, it's the same age as the Single Malt Whiskey Club, being built in 2005 and first production in 2006. Yep, that's correct. As odd as it first sounds, prior to St George's Distillery, the last whiskey distillery in England, the Lee Valley Distillery, shut down in 1905. So a continent that has some of the oldest whiskey distilleries in the world in the north has some of the youngest in the south. And I say some of the youngest because since St George's re reignited the English whiskey distilling scene, no less than 21 or 22 new whiskey distilleries have popped up in England. So the St George's Distillery was a 45 year dream of James Nelstrop. Um, James was born into a grain farming dynasty that could trace their farming roots all the way back to the 1300s. Um, a grain mill in Ackworth, set up by Joseph Nelstrop in 1772, is still operating and run by the Nelstrop family today. Anyway, after a very interesting career in farming and engineering that took him around the world, James wanted his magnum opus to be a whiskey distillery uh, built by him and his son. And after considering a few sites around England, Wales and Scotland, um, the Nelstrops decided on Norfolk and approval was gained in 2005. Uh, the first spirit was produced in 2006 under the watchful eye of Ian Henderson from the Freud Distillery, who was snatched up at his moment of retirement for one last turn at the helm at St George's. He stayed throughout 2007 and trained up his replacement, David Fitt, who still heads the distilling team to this day, as well as overseeing the maturation and production at the distillery. So let's have a look at this whiskey. Here it is. As the name suggests, matured in rum casks, but that's all the info we get. A pleasant light gold colour, light but not anemic. On the nose, wow. At, at first, it's 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 very one-dimensionally rum and raisin ice cream. Really, it's it's a big rum and raisin. It really leaps out. But give it a second and third smell and, and then you start to get vanilla and citrus as well. And, and all the while, there's, a, um, there's just a hint of a sort of rum funk, a sort of an overripe tropical fruit, but in a good way in the background. On the palate, on the palate, that rummy element is gone, but the raisins and citrus remains. Nice and creamy in the mouth though, with waves of spice and oak. Wheat bixi malt and, and vanilla as well. The finish... Wow. The finish is a, a lingering sweet spice and vanilla. And then a surprising saltiness as it fades out. Wow, yum. All right. Now, into bat 
for Australia is our small batch optional extra for April. And it's none other than the recently crowned World Whiskies Awards Australian Best Single Cask Single Malt No Age Statement for 2021. <sighs> Try saying that. Try saying that 10 times. So here it is. The Chief Sun 900 Standard Single Cask Barrel 126. Now, Chief Sun is a distillery on the Mornington Peninsula that is no stranger to gold medals, and this just happens to be their latest. Now, the 900 Standard is one of their lines, and they release it in various finishes and single casks, but the spirit is made from a combination of unpeated malt with a percentage of peated malt, just giving it a very slightly peated spirit. I, I guess their aim is to frame their whiskies with the depth that peat can, ring, can bring, but without overpowering the whiskey with impenetrable smoke. So here it is, aged in a rather vague, again, 230 litre fortified French oak barrel. Certainly has the colour of a nice sherry or a para aged whiskey. That nice reddy brown hue. 47.85 ABV. And there it is in the glass. There you go. It's that nice, like I said, reddy brown, coppery sort of hue. So here we go. On the nose, hmm, there's a lot going on there. It's, it's quite floral and citrusy. But there's a sweetish core of unlit cigars as well. And, and, and there's a mustiness rather than a smokiness here. On the palate. Mm. Mm. On the palate, it's lovely and mouth-coatingly oily. There's, there's stewed fruits, there's dark chocolate, there's a mild spice. There is some subtle smoke there and there's certainly more than the nose suggested. Mm. There's also a real sweet, savoury quality here. Like that sort of, like smoked sweet pork in an Asian market. And the finish, the finish is nice and long. The fruits and spice and peat continue the hand in hand. And they, and, oh, and it fades out ever so gently. Mm, it's long. It's sweet, it's, it's peaty and satisfying, yum. Mm, only 156 bottles of this beauty were made and they've all sold out apart from what we have. Even the distillery doesn't have any more. So that's our ashes in April. The English whiskey company's rum cask matured versus our own Chief Sun Barrel 126 Australian single cask Single malt non-age statement whiskey of the year. It's a body line rum and raisin offering from Old Blighty and an award-winning single cask from the Aussies. The winner, well, that's hard. They're both very different styles of whiskey, so a best is a hard call. If you want a dessert whiskey, sort of free of phenols with absolutely no smoke at all, then the English is going to be the one for you. But if you're looking for a fantastic whiskey to kill a cheese platter or charcuterie board with, the Chief's Sun would be my choice. Of course, if you're planning to match a whole dinner, and not just one course, then get both. I know I will. So anyway, that's it from me for April. I'm Brad Wright from the Single Malt Whiskey Club. Until next month, slanjava.